So what we should be doing, we're not doing this. But what we should be doing is analyzing our actions every single day. Thinking about what we're doing, thinking about what we're saying. We are human beings and we are responsible for our actions. Okay, this is the other phase of, of making money. Is that if someone doesn't want to go bankrupt, they have to do the cheshman every day, what's coming in and what's coming out of their shop, right? You have to, otherwise you're losing money, or one of your workers is embezzling you, and um, you're going to go out of business. So every day they check in to see, every day when the bank closes and you think they never do any work, it's not really true. The bank tellers stay behind after closing out and they're making sure that all the money came in works with all that they've got written down and all the money that went out works with all the money that they Everything has to tap it, right? We need writing the shot What we should be doing, this is intense, right? We should be doing this every day for hours. But at the end of the day, let's say between 9 and 10 in the baby rush, you close your books, you put your phone in the water bucket where it belongs. <laughs> It's good for the fun, by the way. I saw an article on it. Try it. <laughs> and um, and sit there for an hour going through the day. Go through the day. Go through the week on a Thursday night. Go through the week. What did I do? How did I waste my time? How did I spend my time? Who was I nice to? Who was I not nice to? It, it's really good I to do. I admit, having taught this many, many times, I've never, ever done this. Because you think, oh, that's a waste of time. I could do other things, but it's not a waste of time. You know when you're learning Iyun? It's a new subject that you, you, you know, in the mornings when you have these Chumash lessons, right? So depending on or, or the Gomorrah lessons, right? If you're learning Gomorrah, you could be learning Gomorrah for Iyun. And when you first come to, uh, to meet this type of learning, your impression is, we're not covering any ground, right? We're spending, it depends, like in, in my Gomorrah show with Rav Lichtenstein, the Koli Bracha, we could spend three weeks on four lines. Four lines in the Gomorrah. And then in the afternoon you have the cures, and you do four dapim in a week. And as a younger person, you tend to feel, well, the cures is much more rewarding than Ian, right? Because I'm covering ground, I'm accomplishing things. But you see, the thing is, it, it's actually, if you learn, you're learning Sefer Atani with Roshay, there is the short way, which is the long way, and there is the long way, which is the short way. So often when you think it's a shortcut, you actually don't achieve anything at all. And if you take the long road, you actually achieve much more. Because even though you've learned these four lines in tomorrow for three weeks, you'll never ever forget these four lines. And you will learn other concepts as well. And you will, you will broaden your knowledge in the most incredible way. So it might seem like a waste of time to recap over the week, to think about what was, but it's just going to make next week better. It's going to make next week better. And the week after, even better than that. It's just going to get better. Your life is going to be better. You're going to enjoy life more. You're going to get so much more done depending on your experience in a week. I cannot compare my experience last week and this week to the two weeks before that. The two weeks before that are what I imagine hell to be like. I know you were on your own. I wasn't. I was in touch with everyone all the time. And I got home at 7 o'clock and then I was on WhatsApp for four hours every single night. And this week and last week, I mean, phenomenal. I've been able to do Yechidus with uh, my studies of Sobibor and, uh, and my learning. And I, I've been able to, you know, have time to breathe and think and make programs for you. You to program. That's what I'm meant to do, right? But suddenly you've got the weeks get better. There's better weeks. There's, there's better weeks. You get better things done. And even though it's going to take of your time, 
you're going to have a better life if you think about what you're doing, if you actually think it through. And the paradox we have here is the last thing young people want to do. I know, I'm young. It's the last thing young people want to do is, is think about things. I don't want to think about things. I want to throw caution to the wind. What a diabolical, idiotic, negative IQ statement. Throw caution to the wind and get arrested. Throw caution to the wind and go to jail. Throw caution to the wind and have an overdose with drugs. All these things. Throw caution to the wind and be a single parent family for the rest of your life. All these people who throw caution to the wind and see what quality of life they have because of the five minutes that they threw caution to the wind. What oh, nonsense. Go with your gut. What does that mean? Have you ever seen a gut? That you want to go with your gut? Why would you go with your gut? Go with your brain. Go with your mind. You want to go with your digestive system or your duodenum? I mean, why would you want to go with your intestines? Where are you going to go with them? What are you going to achieve? Go with your gut. Think things through. You don't lose time, you gain by thinking things through. Shaot lezer, hours for that. But let's start, let's start 20 minutes a week, tonight. If I remember, I'll text you at 10 o'clock and say, everyone sit down and run through their week. And I've got cameras everywhere to see whether you're doing it. I'll put my cameras on in the rubber. And you'll suddenly get a text, you're not doing it. <laughs> you're not doing your shot that like Mr. Lakishan said you should do. And I'll be for your gazelle, but you should do this all the time. Now, obviously, everything more a person does is difficult. It's difficult. But if you do it often, it becomes easier. It becomes easier. I'm sure a lot of you couldn't contemplate this time last year sitting in a midrashah for 16 hours. Maybe some of you can't contemplate it now, but a lot of you can. Why? Because you've done it. And once you've done it, you understand that you can do it. And you understand what the benefits are from it. But back there, you're thinking about going to Israel. You're, this isn't the reason most people come to Israel. This was a conversation I was having with one of the parents a few weeks ago. Well, they said to me, you know, at the end of the day, they're not having the Israel experience. So I said to the parent, I said, you know, I had some really nice conversations, but I said, well, what is the Israel experience from a Midrash or Yeshiva perspective? The Israel experience is coming to Israel to learn. So we're doing that. In fact, we've learned more than ever before in the time that we've had, because we haven't done much else. Another part of the Israel experience is in, in, in Russia, Harova is, is the old city. Uh, we haven't left the old city, so we've had that experience we got on, right? We are ambassadors to the Kotel. Uh, another experience is having the Hagim together. We've done more that, of that this than ever before. So, what is the Israel experience that people are missing out on? So, well, it, it's, it's growing in the physical way that they're missing out on. All the restaurants and, the, uh, and, and going into town, you know. And, that's not the Israel experience, right? But it is probably the Israel experience you were imagining this time last year. And, you know, it, it wasn't, no one was thinking as they were trying to get through their A-levels and their matriculations and their SATs and ACTs and ABCs and, and whatever they do in Montreal. The, uh, they, they go back next year and they have to do it all again and then and, and, and they go back to high school for a year, right? And then they have to... Um, <laughs> But, but it, you, weren't, you weren't contemplating, you weren't contemplating like sitting here and listening to Shiri all day. That wasn't, that didn't bring you here. Now you're here, it's good fun, I think it's good fun. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes, right? So when you're, when you're thinking about, thinking about life, I want to think, you do, ladies, you want to think about life. You want to think about life. It's actually fun to think about things. It's actually fun. And you know what's really fun? When you have the time to do it. You have the time to do it. I, I'm not talking about time as in TikTok time, like TikTok, I mean the clock, not you know, the films you make, but I'm talking about quality of time. What do I mean? There is, in life in general, and you know it because you've lived life, there is pressure. Like when you're in your last year of school, there's pressure. You have to get grades, you have to get into university, you have to get into 
yeshiva. You, there's a pressure there, right? There's a pressure. It, there's a pressure. I know it's such that last year we, we were told by the schools in America to put off the day that we told girls whether we were accepting them or not because the day they were getting the results wasn't a good day. I think it was the day you were on Chofesh and they, well, they wanted it when you were on Chofesh, right? Not when you were in school. There's pressure, right? There's pressure. And, and once you send them out, everyone knows they're out. And we normally send them at 3 o'clock in the morning in America time, so, so you're all asleep then by then, obviously. And, uh, and um, there's pressure, right? And next year, well, there's a year after, there's pressure there as well, right? Because you're in university. University is just school for adults, right? Or pretend adults. So, so you know, there's pressure again, and more pressure because there's career, and also you've got a tie the knot with Josh, right? And, and so there's that pressure as well. And so where isn't there pressure? This year there's no pressure. Honestly, there's no pressure. If you have pressure this year, it's because you're doing what a regular human being does. You've created your own pressure, but you haven't got any real pressure. That's, that's, a, that's the beauty of this year. You have time. You have time to sit upstairs and think. Not talk and SMS. You have time. You're in a baby rush. There's no pressure here. There's no pressure. Even the test that I'll give you in Torah the Cube, for example, no, I'm not asking your marks. It's for you to test yourself. There's pressure here. So you're in this most idyllic situation where you can go upstairs, look out the window and see the beautiful old city of Jerusalem and contemplate life. You will never ever have this opportunity again in your life. I dream for this. I dream for it. I didn't appreciate it. I, I, I spent my year off learning. I didn't do anything else, but I wasn't mature enough to understand the gift that I had. It was a lot of peer pressure. I wasn't mature enough to appreciate that, that I had time just to sit. There was a guy, when I was in Kono, there was a guy in Yeshiva, and I, I never forget what he did. He had these questions. All different questions over time. What did questions over philosophical questions? And he, um, he went round every single round asking the questions and writing down the answers. He was such a pain in the neck, but, 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 he, but that's what he did. Now imagine if, if, if you really had your brains on you at the moment, what you could do here. You have a question, choose a question. Your definition of God. Go speak to Rabbi Bailey about that. They go to Rabbi Zygdon. They go to Rabbi Yoni. I'm making it easier as we go along. Then finish off with Rabbi Berg. That's a lovely question. That's a lovely question. That's a lovely question. That's a lovely question. Well, you'll say, your God. God is in you. Rabbi, you'll say, I don't know, but let's sing a song. Rabbi, you'll tell me about God in England. And Rabbi, you'll say, Hack. <laughs> Imagine that kid. A girl once walked into my office halfway through the year crying. She walked in crying. Again. For the record, she walked in crying. I just want you to know I've always had this effect on people even before I'm in the middle. It's the effect I have, but I speak to them when she sat down and we're working, we're working through it. And she walks into my office crying, and I tell her, you boys don't cry, right? They don't cry, boys. You know, they don't shame them, they don't cry. So, and I said, I said, I said what, what are you crying now? What do I say? Like, what, 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 why are you crying? So she said, she cut my mouth cut. These are the words she said to me. I just realized who your Wolf is. That's what she said to me. It, it wasn't halfway through the year, it was in May. She says, I just realized who, not what she's teaching us, I just realized who this person is, this individual. You didn't see it this year because she, she, she couldn't come, she was in isolation. Miriam Wolf, at the age of 40, adopted a Down syndrome child. He is the most beautiful child. And he comes to Yom Kippur. And I spend Yom Kippur dancing with him. He couldn't come this year because she was in isolation. And she did this at the age of 40. She adopted Rav Yonatan has fostered children twice. And you know what to foster a child is? It means you have to give them back. You, know, you can't begin to even 
think of the pain, it's not adopting, it's fostering it. And you have to give them back. And the rules of fostering is you can never identify yourself again to the child because the child goes back to their parents, right? You, you take the child from the parents for a few years while the parents sort themselves out, but then the point is to give them back to their parents. So you, you have to break the connection. You have to be pretty righteous to do that. What if you run into the What? No, you're not an ass. But, but, but again, I, I'll, I'll teach you fostering later. But, but the, 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 um, you, you don't understand the people in front of you and you don't appreciate them. And, and I was once sitting at a table in a sink with Rav Shane. <laughs> Obviously a very social moment, me and Rav Shane at a table. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 Tell me that about change, yeah, it's me, it's me, it's me. But, I mean, once the meal's over, I just don't know what to do. If they don't want to talk about the first world war or the second world war, I'm just talking about it. If we're in good sight, I'll speak about Israel, but otherwise I just don't know what to say. I, I, do, I can say, but it seems to put people off when I ask them, have, have they read like, any biographies on this? They say, no, it's, it's, it's not a conversation thing. So Rav is sitting there at the table and he's mumbling. He's mumbling. If you're looking from a distance, you see the man who talks his mind. He says, You know what he's doing? Rashem knows Shas Mishnah is off by heart. Rashem knows Shas Mishnah is off by heart. Rashem has an incredible memory. And he's sitting there running through Mishnah. You've got no idea who these people are. You, huh? You and Rashem are so close. You're saying the Holocaust. This was, a, this was a long time ago. This was a long time ago. I don't even think he had the position that he has now. But you don't understand who's in front of you right now. What an opportunity you have. Now, we, we think every human being does this. It's not just you. Every human being, instead of appreciating opportunity, they're worried about the hot water in the shower, the cold water, and, and some of the rat in their apartment, big deal. You know, Tom and Jerry, we worry about we serious things. We worry about serious things, okay? But. We're missing an opportunity. And this is an incredible opportunity. Everything he's talking about, that's what you do every day, you have a whole year to do this. You have a whole year just to think things out. And purposely, in this school, we've done this, right? Purposely, you have a diversity of person. And you know exactly what I told you would happen in the first week it's happening now, right? I told you in the first week, at the beginning, you'll choose your in according to subject, but you would end up going towards, gravitating towards a certain teacher. I think that teacher happens to have a bad week with you, you'll all come into my office and move out. Right? I, know, I know if our baby's given a tough shit, suddenly everyone's in my room at 10 to 1, I want to go to Rabioni. <laughs> <laughs> I need Rabioni. I need, I need, I need, I need. You can tell, I, and then I'll go to our baby and say, what did you do, what did you do today? Like, what did you say today? Or if I think to challenge your belief in God. <laughs> And then, and then, no, no, I need, I need to go up there. I'm just seeing the week of up there. This is like a painkiller. Right? I need to go up there for a week. I just need to go up there. I need to calm down. But you know, Brad, so what an opportunity you have. And, and what he's talking about, human beings have to do every day. You have a whole year just to do that. That's all you're meant to do here. That's all you're meant to do here is sit down, relax. Because you shouldn't, you shouldn't have any pressure now. There's no exam pressure. You, your food is given to you, your bed is given to you, it, it's not like mum is dead, not like mum is food, the Savior. But, but it's an ideal scenario. And you can just sit there and think about whatever you want to think about, whatever issues bother you. And he's saying do this every day. That, if you ask me, what is the year in Israel for? This is what the year in Israel is for. I wish I'd have known, I wish someone had have told me this. Like I'm telling you, no one told me this. I think this is a lot of the but what did I learn? But, and, and I did the learning. But I, I didn't I didn't look at the the global picture about what I could be doing. About what I could be thinking about, about and we gravitate towards the stupid things, the little things, you know, a day off a day of Friday or Monday night, whatever. We don't understand the greatness of what we we're looking at, what a gift this is. I'm telling you as a fact that I don't want to be an annoying adult. I'm not really an annoying pretend adult. The 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 I always say this to girls now, right? It's hard when you're in the middle of that thing, you know, when you're in the middle of college on a snowy day in Brooklyn, in you know, a year, two years' time, you will dream about this. You will dream about this. You will remember that you were, and I hope, I hope that it won't be a regretful dream. Uh, why did I, I had 
kind of things, you know, I had time to, I had time to digest it. And I didn't do it because I was worried about, I don't know, conflicts or I was worried about this. Or this. It's an opportunity. Right? Now, he says you have to do this every day of your life. And it's intense. But the result is phenomenal. It just changes the quality of your life. So that's what the Gemara says. We have to be doing cheshbon. We're, we're, we're human beings. We have to be thinking about what we're doing. We're human beings. Right? You're intelligent people. Every single one of you in this room, I've told you, is more intelligent than me. It's not a great result to be more intelligent than me. But you're, 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 more, you're, you're intelligent people. So give us your intelligence just to do calculus and to remember facts, but to analyze your life, to think about things. And this is what he says now. And this is a mission in Turkey. Have said mitzvah keneged schara, the sachar mitzvah keneged her seidah. This is such an important sentence to me. And I have to tell you, I didn't realize what the sentence was saying until a couple of years ago. I've read this many times in Turkey. It says, it says, way things are, when you think that the, the loss of a mitzvah in relation to how much you gain, but listen to the next sentence, schar avira kenega hesedah. Chazal is telling us there is a schar for an avira. Don't let any rabbi tell you that there's no reward for doing an avira. Of course there is. Otherwise people won't do it. Of course there's a schar for doing an avira. People wouldn't do avira if there wasn't a schar. The question is, what price do you pay for doing What do you lose when you do Of course there is. Of course there's some kind of enjoyment by doing something wrong. Because if there wasn't, people wouldn't do it, right? There must, there must be. Someone who tells you, you know, they come along with their adult face and they say, ah, oh, smoking's a waste of time, there's no, that's nonsense. You obviously never smoked a cigarette. I've got lots of, I've got lots of enjoyment of smoking cigarettes. I still cherish it. I think two weeks ago when everything was falling apart, I cherish to sit in my office with a cigarette in my hand and a coffee. Yeah, you know, just breathe it in and just calm me down, right? I, but what's the price you pay? Heart disease, cancer, that's the price you pay. That's the price. And you're saying cancer's dirty, right? But that's the price you pay. There is a schar, of course it's a schar. There's a schar when people get drunk with schar because you, you, you're you not thinking about anything, you're escaping from reality. What's the hesed? The hesed is what you do when you get drunk and the hangover when you have an hesed and vomiting all over the place. There's a schar and there's a, and there's a hesed, right? And a human being is meant to be thinking about these things, not after it's done when you're paying the price, but before. Just think it through. Just think it through. There was a girl years ago, I don't know what I said, a Facebook girl, did I do a Facebook girl? But it, it wasn't, she wasn't from here, right? She wasn't so bright, I suppose, what they say. Oh, yeah. I did, you know, not the sharpest tool in the shed. She, she went out on a Monday night and she had a shot of vodka somewhere and, and she put a picture on Facebook. And so she was in this school, but I knew because the head of the school came to me to ask me to send her. And then someone sent the link to the Facebook to her Rosh Russia. So he had to throw her out. Like she couldn't really deny it. It was her there with the vodka and her, her hand round what wasn't her husband. And uh, and um, he had to ask her to leave. Like she blatantly broke her leg. It wasn't very clever to do such a thing. But you yeah, okay, so now I, I can tell you, you have no idea because you have no idea about these things. I can tell you, she didn't enjoy the vodka because she's not a cop. She's not a Ford Cortina. A Ford Cortina enjoys, enjoys gasoline. But the human beings don't enjoy gasoline. Only poor Russians who couldn't afford good single malt whiskeys, they enjoy vodka. Okay, then it's not, it's, not a, it's not a drink that people enjoy. And the proof is, as you don't know, that they have flavors to it and you have to ice it. And all of this is to get rid of the real taste of what vodka is. It's petrol. So she didn't enjoy the drink, but she probably enjoyed feeling grown up because she's having a shot of vodka, so she looks like Al Capone like Mason is, and, and it impressed Josh. And Josh needs to be impressed. So, um, for what price did she pay? She went home a week later. Because no school, no decent school is always taken She went home a week later. She lost a whole year of business. It was in November this happened. It was during recruitment time. I remember when it happened. And, um, so this is a or an imaginable sukha, but what's the hefsaid? Every time you do something, you decide, of course there's something you, you enjoy. Of course there is something you enjoy. 
what price do you pay? What price do you pay? And, and it's not just naughty things. It could be bad food, right? It, it's, it's a problem. I know that's happening in America for Gadol now. But they, had, they had a real problem with obesity in America a few years ago, but they still got a problem with it. But the fast foods, right? My first experience in America, they took, I was in Chicago, they took me to a place called Ken's Diner. Oh, yeah. Ken's oh, yeah. Diner. Is he still there? This is a typical American experience because everyone ordered a double burger, a double burger, double portion of chips, double onion rings, uh, and a diet coke. Uh, that's really going to help. The diet coke is really going to help you with the calories after you've had your you're lying on the floor having a having a cardiac arrest. <laughs> Zero. Okay, so. But this is this is the Mishnah. As opposed to my rabbis in school, my rabbis in school said you get not, nothing out of the Mishnah. The Mishnah doesn't say that. The Misha says there is a schar on Deva. So the question is, what price are you going to pay for this? And you've got to do the cheshbon. He says it in Baba Batra. Pirkei Pirkei Avot. So, so, so <laughs> it might say Baba Batra. No, it, no the, piece, the piece before is Baba Batra. But no, it says the door before is Baba Batra. But, but that, that piece is schar Deva can make it So there's, there's something you have to think about. Ladies, do whatever you want to do in life. But make a proper decision about it. Don't just do it as some kind of robot, adolescent dumbo. Make a proper decision. Yeah. What's the transition of Scar? Scar is a reward. A reward, yeah. A reward against what you lose, okay? You have to make any decision you make. I, I'm not interested in create. My Rosh Hashim always is, my Rosh Hashim's name is Rabbi Amital, and he always used to say, I don't want to make Amitalim. I don't want to make copies of myself. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in people like repeating things that we say and trying to pretend to be like us. I, I'm not, not interested in at all. I'm interested in showing you different drachim and of you making conscious choices, making thinking choices about what you're doing. Obviously, I have an interest in what choices you make and I, I have a point of view of what choices you should make, but I want you to make choices. I want a person to say, you know, I was there and I saw this, but I moved away. I didn't do this, so I, I went this way. I, I'm, I'm thinking. You're a thinking human being, and don't tell me you're too young. 18 is not young. 17 isn't young either, okay? Or 16. 17. It's not young either. It's not young either. I have to tell you on a more serious point, you want to see, you want to walk around Hart Hertz or, and see the ages on the tombstones and you'll see that they, they were your age. Most of them were your age and they built the state of Israel. You're not too young, you're, you're awake off being too young. A 14 year old isn't too young. You're thinking people and therefore you have to think. You don't owe it to me, not to your parents, not even to God. You owe it to yourself. <laughs>